Hello everyone, welcome to tutorial 3 on creating AI images with Disco Diffusion 5.2. And in this tutorial I'm going to show you the prompt that I used to create this image and I'm going to talk about modifiers, mostly focusing on artists. And we're just going to get right into it here with the with this prompt here. Geiger, Cthulhu, Steampunk, Battleship, and Ocean, Amber, Byzantium, Orange, Red, Clouds, Explosion, Smoke, Stormy Ocean in style of Federico Palat Greg Grukowski. Okay, and here's our render. Now, I want you to notice at the very end there, it says in style of Federico Palat Greg Grukowski. That's the artist. That is what we're going to talk about today. And there's a guide down there with 70 artists. And we're going to start with one artist and then add another one and then another one. So with, with that number, with 70, when you add five artists to it, there are over a billion combinations you can use. So we're going to start here. We're going to start with one of the more popular artists, and I have posted the, the prompt there in the video. Uh, so we're going to start. I'm just going to call him Z. I'm not going to butcher his name. So we're going to start here with him, and then we're going to consequently add an artist each time. And so if you can see, here's the render we just got with that prompt from Z, and now we're going to change it. Now we're going to add Thomas Kincaid on top of that. Okay, and as this video goes, just because the screen might be kind of small for you to see the prompts, I'm going to post the prompts in big letters for each render up at the top of the screen in the video. So if you ever get lost, just check up there, and that's the prompt we're using. Okay, and here we have Thomas Kincaid NZ, and this is our next render. And now I want to stress too here, I'm not showing you how to use this list practically right now. I'm just showing you how powerful it is. Two, with two different artists and a total of 70 on the list right now, there are 4,830 combinations. That gives you a lot of ways to modify it. Now, at the end of this, I'm going to show you how to be practical with this list, though, and create something that looks good and is coherent to the image you're making. We'll do that at the end here. Right now, I'm going to add another artist in here. Let's go with this one, Albert Beardstadt. We'll throw him in the mix here. And this one's about done, and there it is. Okay, so this is with those three. So now we're actually going to, let's go ahead and take Z out of the mix. But yeah, that looks kind of interesting. So we're going to go ahead and take him out for now. And we're going to add two different ones. We're going to keep these two in. Okay, and our image is wrapping up here. And if you notice, now it has a completely different vibe now. We took Z out. We added a new one in. We have four artists now total. Now we have one, two, three, four artists here. And that means that there is a total of 22 million 5,480 different combinations out of those 70 artists you can do if you use four. Now, there are a couple in there that I don't use. And I'll go show you that here in a minute. This is just about done here. Listen, and we're going to do one more with five artists on our next one. But I want to show you a couple of artists that you might want to avoid and why. Now, this one, unless you want people made out of fruit, you don't want to pick this one. But if you do want people made out of fruit, that's what he specializes in. He makes portraits of people's faces out of fruit. Francis Bacon, I generally don't use. The reason is because you might get a little bit of Francis Bacon's work, but you do get bacon. If you notice, this is a piece of bacon there, I think. So you will get bacon when you use Francis Bacon. If you pick Walter Crane, you will get, you guessed it, Crane. So I usually don't use that one either, unless I want Cranes. And the other one is famous surreal artist Salvador Dali. When you enter Salvador Dali, more often than not, you'll get what he is almost more famous for than his art. You'll get his mustache. If you notice, you'll get these curly mustaches by using his name. So unless you want curly mustaches in places where they do not belong, don't use that one. Okay, so up till now, I've just been kind of showing you how powerful this tool is. We've just been kind of using artists randomly. And here's all final render here with all five artists but there is a better way to use this what i'll usually do when i'm coming up with a new image is i'll try it with different artists and i'll just pick the artists that render that image the best so you don't always want to use the same one for each image you want to experiment and try different ones okay so what i what i do first usually if i'm coming up with a new concept like i said i'm just using you know something kind of typical here um i have a cottage by a lake with a beautiful sky in the background by and then i'll just go down the list and start throwing some of the artists in there and i'll see which one makes that look the best okay and i'm just going to start at the very top of this list which is this one okay and this is what we're getting right now with that artist and, you know, sometimes, too, when I'm looking, I can say, oh, this is not really what I want. This might look interesting, but I maybe want something more realistic. So for this prompt, maybe this artist would be cool for something else I want to try sometime. But right now, I'm just going to stop this render 
and try a different artist. And this is a technique that will really help you get the image that you want and coherency. You can, let's try this artist here. So some artists you know are better at using for a certain subject matter, so that's why I do this. Then when I find two or maybe three that I like the render for my image, then I'll kind of save them or mix them together. But that's just a great way, you know, to do your own study and see which artist is the best for that one. Okay, and there that's done. So we're going to go ahead and stop this now, and I'm going to show you one more very important set of modifiers you can use. The other thing I'm talking about is you'll see a lot of those modifiers at the end like trending on art station what that does is it's going to select images from that kind of pool or add them in i'm not really sure technically how it does it but it can, it can drastically change the image so so i'm sure you're probably familiar with that so we're just going to run this again with that prompt the trending on art station because it can make sometimes it can make it a lot better sometimes it can make it worse sometimes it cannot show much of a change. We'll see what this one does. Okay, and our render is coming along here. And if you can see, I really don't like it. I think this actually made it worse. So that's what I was talking about with ArtStation. It can kind of limit your what it's drawing the images from. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but basically I'm just showing you the effect of these things. So sometimes it can make it worse. Sometimes it can make it better. Okay, and the next modifier I want to talk about is rendered in Unreal Engine. So what this does, this rendered in Unreal Engine, it will really take your your kind of flat photo and make it look 3D like it was rendered in a video game basically. Okay, so this one looks like it's wrapping up and like I said, you can get mixed results with rendered in Unreal Engine. Sometimes it will really make your images look cool. You know, it'll bring it to life and kind of make it look 3D. Sometimes it'll make it worse. It'll have like foggy things like this one, uh, you know, it's it's not a real, I don't think it really improved it. I still think that first rendering we did was the best. So I'm going to show you one more prompt that is kind of similar to this where it'll give a 3D effect to your image. And we'll see if that one makes this look any better. And we're going to put this one here, ultra realistic and detailed 8K V-Ray render. So we're just going to put that in there and see what this one does. Okay, well, this render's starting to wind down here. Now, in the next tutorial, one of the things that there is a problem with sometimes in Diffusion is coherency, like especially with people and organic things. So the next tutorial I'm going to give here is going to be about using a starting image. That way you can use something that it's going to take and modify that image, and that'll help you with coherency and things like that. So I hope this tutorial helped you, and thank you for watching, and please hit that like and subscribe. You see I'm still a new channel, but I'm going to be doing many more of these to come. And when my limited amount of knowledge on here does run out for the tutorials, then I'm just going to be posting, you know, the stuff I'm doing. Maybe show my prompts and my studies, things like that. But I've kind of shown you now, I think, more than enough knowledge to get out there and make some really cool stuff. So go ahead and link me what you've got there in the comments. I'll see you guys next time, and stay tuned to this channel for more exciting AI stuff in the future. Thanks for watching.